Hello, welcome back to another breaking news update. My name is Jimmy Boyd and you were watching Boyd News. I want to thank you so much for tuning in today. I've got some updates coming out from Israel to share with you. We haven't talked much about Israel recently as it's been relatively quiet in terms of news, but I've got multiple topics to discuss with you here today. Some of the biggest news we have coming out from Israel is what you see here on your screen. This is U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken arriving in, in uh, Tel Aviv to go meet with Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister, along with uh, Isaac Herzog, the President, and the Israeli government to uh, discuss this ceasefire proposal that was supposed to be negotiated with Hamas. And we've got big news in regards to that. Hamas has rejected the latest hostage deal with Israel. This is a U.S.-led hostage deal and, uh, that obviously is going to favor Israel, and they have definitely rejected this once again. So it looks like there will be no ceasefire in the Gaza Strip anytime soon. Uh, maybe they'll start discussing some more later next week, but I've been talking about this for a long time. Uh, neither side never agrees to anything because they have major demands from Hamas, major demands from Israel, and they are never able to come to an agreement because of these demands that they have. So we also have reports of a, a possible terror attack in, in Tel Aviv. A bomb exploded uh, in the middle of the street, damaging a truck and also a building nearby. Uh, the authorities there believe that this could have been a terror attack and that somebody was carrying a bomb and supposedly the bomb blew this person up. Uh, the attacker was the only person that was killed. We do have reports of an injury of a uh, innocent bystander as well. So we'll talk about that here in just a little bit, but I've got video footage to share with you guys. We also have an update coming out from uh, the prime minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, giving us an update on the ceasefire negotiation situation and uh, he was having a government meeting there in Israel tonight and just kind of gave an update to the citizens as well. Let them know that they're prepared for any attack from Iran, things like that. So we'll go over that video here in just a minute. But let me go ahead and jump right into the news and talk about this terror attack first. We'll discuss this, then we'll talk about Benjamin Netanyahu, and then I'll also talk about the ceasefire deal towards the end of this video. So Vicegrad24 breaking. Reports of a bomb having exploded near a truck in Tel Aviv. Body parts have been found at the scene. The police is investigating an attempted terror attack. Right now, it looks like the bomb went off prematurely and only killed the attacker. Okay, so maybe this person was carrying the bomb. I have no idea what happened, but this bomb definitely went off prematurely in the middle of the street, probably while they were holding on to it. Um, and it does say body parts have been found at the scene, but don't worry, this video does not show anything like that. There's no graphic footage, uh, but we can definitely see remnants of this explosion. So only five seconds long. Take a look. Wanted to let that roll a couple times in case you missed it the first time. So yeah, as we can see here in the middle of the street, definitely some remnants of the explosion here. And uh, there was a truck just over here to the right. This truck got hit and damaged. And also that building in the back over here on the right side, this kind of yellowish building was damaged as well. Okay, so uh, obviously Israeli authorities investigating right now. They're going to have to uh, do some sort of analysis on the person here that uh, died to this bomb, see if they can figure out who this ties back to, where did they come from, how did they get this bomb, where did it? Where did the bomb come from. Uh, so they're still trying to investigate to find out what happened, and who knows, maybe this will tie back to some other country like Iran or Hezbollah or something like that. Obviously, this looks and appears to be some sort of terror attack, but they are stating as well it could be some sort of criminal act, but more on the lines of a terror act, okay? So... Let's go ahead and keep moving. Also from Vicegrad 24, this was the, the moment the bomb exploded in Tel Aviv tonight. Looks like a failed attack in which the bomb exploded prematurely and only killed the attacker. So we got a 10 second clip of what appears to be some sort of security camera footage on maybe somebody's balcony or something overlooking Tel Aviv. And pay attention to the right bottom side of your screen. You're going to see a flash followed up with a major explosion. So take a look at this. Okay, so as we can see, there's that flash there on the bottom right side of your screen. And then we heard that major explosion in the background. So this was definitely a massive bomb that went off. Um, so, I mean, if this bomb is that big too, it definitely was most likely going to be used for some sort of terrorist act in Tel Aviv. And obviously, uh, Israel's at war with multiple nations right now, multiple enemies across to the Middle East. 
So, you know, obviously this is something that could be expected in Tel Aviv, especially considering it's a major city in, uh, in Israel. So uh, definitely a crazy video to show you there. One last video and picture to share with you from the informant. There was a truck explosion in Tel Aviv. The police in Shin Bet are investigating the case. As some rumors say, it was a failed attempt to carry out a terrorist bomb attack. So short video, I think it's only about three or four seconds. And then also a picture to share with you as well. So take a look at this. All right, so as we can see here, massive panic. We've got uh, lines of cars here stuck in a traffic jam trying to get through here and uh, lots of emergency crews, emergency crews showing up to take care of the situation as this bomb has gone off. So again, from what I understand, only the attacker has been killed in this situation. And also uh, we've got reports that I'll show you in just a moment that an innocent bystander has been injured and thankfully nobody else was hurt or killed in this attack. So that is a good thing for sure. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep moving here. I've also got this report from the Times of Israel in regards to this attack. Senior officer, it's possible Tel Aviv truck explosion was an attempted terror attack. Okay, so take a look at this photo. We can see the damage, this truck, um, and also this building. Something definitely crashed into the wall right here too. Maybe the explosion launched something over here and it smashed into that wall. So we can definitely see that damage there. A senior police officer says that a truck explosion in Tel Aviv that killed the driver could have been an attempted terror attack. Speaking to reporters at the scene, Tel Aviv Police District Commander Peretz Amar says that the explosion was caused by a bomb and that the identity of the man, a dead man, holds the key to the motive. It is difficult to identify the body, says Amar. We know that he is not an innocent civilian, but somebody who was carrying an explosive device. Was this criminal or a terror attack? The identity of the man is crucial to determining this, he says, adding that the possibility it was an attempted attack is heightened by the findings at the scene. Amar says that a passerby who was injured in the explosion might have been able to assist the probe, so they'll probably contact that individual who was injured in this uh, explosion here, and maybe they could try to identify who this person was, maybe where they came out of. Did they come out of a building nearby or a car that was possibly nearby? Um, so obviously a lot of questions remain to be answered here to figure out what was the cause of this attack and what was the motive, um, but we'll definitely probably find out here in the next couple days. So let's go ahead and move on to the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, now giving us an update. So at the start of a government meeting, Israel is prepared for any threat defensively and offensively. We are determined to defend ourselves and exact a high price, very high price for any, from any enemy who dares to attack us from any arena whatsoever. So this is about a minute and a half. So just pay attention to what he has to say. He gives some updates regarding the Hamas ceasefire negotiations and also uh, that they are prepared for any attack coming from Iran or any of the proxy groups, anything like that. So just take a look real quick. Israel will be able to defend ourselves and not in any other arena. We אנחנו מנהלים מסע ומתן מורכב מאוד, כשבצד השני עומד ארגון טרור רצחני, חסר עקבות וסרבני. אבל אני רוצה להדגיש, אנחנו מקיימים מסע ומתן ולא מתן ומתן. יש דברים שאנחנו יכולים להיות גמישים לגביהם, ויש דברים שאנחנו לא יכולים להיות גמישים לגביהם, ואנחנו מתעקשים עליהם. אנחנו יודעים היטב להבדיל בין השניים. לכן לצד המאמצים הכבירים שאנחנו עושים להחזרת חטופינו, אנחנו עומדים איתן על העקרונות שקבענו שהם חיוניים לביטחון ישראל. והעקרונות הללו, אני חוזר ואומר, תואמים את מתווה ה-27 במאי שזכה לתמיכה אמריקנית. אני מבקש שוב להדגיש, החמאס עד לרגע זה דבק בסרבנותו, הוא אפילו לא שלח נציג לשיחות בדוחה. ולכן את הלחץ צריך להפנות לחמאס ולסינואר ולא לממשלת ישראל. הלחץ הצבאי החזק, הלחץ המדיני החזק, זאת הדרך להשגת שחרור חטופנו. Okay, so definitely lots of uh, big updates here coming from the Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu out of Israel. And if you notice, he mentioned there in his statement that uh, in regards to these hostage, hostage uh, you know, negotiation deal with, with Hamas, 
that he said that there were some things they could be flexible on, some things they will not be flexible on, okay? And, and these are some of those things like the, we know that they do not want to give up the Philadelphia Corridor and also the Rafa crossing. These are on the southern side of the Gaza Strip. These are crossings that the, uh, the Hamas members would use to bring weapons and, you know, rocket systems, whatever they would bring in to terrorize Israel, okay? This is where a lot of that stuff was coming from. That's why that was one of their major goals was to take control of those crossings once they got into Rafa, okay? And they started to do that almost immediately. So I also heard some information that uh, that Benjamin Netanyahu was saying that they supposedly had, for the most part, eliminated Hamas inside of, uh, the, inside of Rafa as well, that uh, Hamas was almost not even exist, uh, non-existent in, uh, in Rafa now. So that was some big news. And we know that right now the IDF is still operating throughout the Gaza Strip. I've been hearing lots of bombs being dropped all over Gaza recently. So this war is not anywhere close to being over. Now that we're hearing that this Hamas ceasefire deal has been rejected once again, uh, it's going to continue, okay? And it's only going to get worse, and we're potentially going to see a response coming from Iran pretty soon as well. So let's go ahead and jump into talking about this hostage uh, negotiation deal real quick, okay? So from uh, uh, Jerusalem Post, Hamas rejects U.S. bridging offer as Blinken lands in Israel to advance hostage deal. U.S. proposal essentially corresponds to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's rejection of a permanent ceasefire and a refusal to allow the uh, for the IDF to fully withdraw from Gaza, Hamas said. Okay, so these are some of the big demands on either side. Israel does not want to withdraw the IDF uh, permanently from the Gaza Strip. They do not want a permanent ceasefire, okay? And they do not want to stop fighting down in the Gaza Strip until Hamas is completely dismantled and gone. And then at the same time, Hamas wants Israel to withdraw from the Gaza Strip and call for a permanent ceasefire, at least at some point, if they're going to agree to negotiations, they want Hamas to remain in the Gaza Strip. So because both these sides feel like that about each other, one side is saying, we're not done in the Gaza Strip until you're gone. And then the other side is saying, we want you gone so we can remain in the Gaza Strip. So you, they're never going to be able to come to, to any kind of agreement because of that. Okay, that's the major problem here. So it says Hamas rejected America's bridging proposal to help finalize a Gaza hostage and ceasefire deal. As U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken landed in Israel Sunday night amid a major diplomatic blitz by the Biden administration to finalize an agreement this week. The bridging proposal placed new conditions on the exchange of hostages for Palestinians jailed in Israel. Hamas said that he referred, uh, as he referred to Palestinian security prisoners and terrorists that would be released in the deal. Other agreements previously arrived at have been retracted, it explained. The U.S. proposal essentially corresponds to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's rejection of a permanent ceasefire and refusal to allow for the IDF to fully withdraw from Gaza, Hamas said. The terror group spoke up after Netanyahu's office released a statement that left no room for doubt as to where Netanyahu stood on the issue of a permanent ceasefire, which has been a key Hamas demand. The Prime Minister's office stressed that Israel has not given up on one of its most fundamental demands, that it must be allowed to continue to battle Hamas in Gaza until such time uh, until such time as it has ousted the terror group from the enclave, a goal it has yet to complete in 10 months into the war. So you see what I mean? They're not going to be able to agree on anything. And I don't even understand why Hamas and Israel even try to hold negotiations if both sides clearly feel very strongly about these types of things, okay? Again, Israel does not want to withdraw from the Gaza Strip until Hamas is gone. Hamas wants Israel to pull out now, and they will not agree to any kind of a deal unless the IDF fully withdraws from the Gaza Strip. So they're not going to be able to come to some sort of agreement at all. Now that leads us to our next point. Does that mean now that, uh, that Iran is going to carry out this large-scale attack on Israel that we've been waiting on for the last two weeks? Yes, it could be very possible that we could be seeing this moving towards uh, moving that direction next, okay? Because we also heard from Iran recently. They came out and said that if Israel shows any kind of indication that they are trying to uh, prolong these negotiations or try to go around them in any way or anything like that and not agree to a ceasefire, that they will attack Israel. So is that the next case? Is that what's coming up next? Very possible. Uh, we do know as well the U.S. has moved one-third of its naval assets into the region of the Middle East. So, you know, obviously lots of military hardware over there to protect Israel right now. It's a massive amount 
of uh, firepower. And if Iran decides to attack Israel, we could definitely see a major response onto Iran. And I don't know if they want that. I don't know if they want to deal with that. Okay, so uh, it's very hard to see what to uh, tell what's going to happen over here. But we know that things are still wildly out of control. And this uh, war down in the Gaza Strip is not going to end anytime soon. It doesn't appear that way at all. And uh, this is pushing us closer to an inevitable front opening up with Hezbollah very soon as well. And also this attack that could be coming from Iran that we're still waiting on to see if it's going to happen. But you guys let me know what you think down below. That's going to be it for today's update. If you got something out of this, please smash that like button. Also, if you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing down below. Hit the notification bell. That way YouTube can notify you with that. I hope you all have a great day. Everybody take care and God bless. And we'll see you in the next one.